Now, I've said on this show many times that one of the most fun things we could do as fly tires is experiment. Now, I came up with a pattern last spring, so just over a year ago, and it's done pretty well for me. Now, it's not a very original pattern. It's certainly not really unique. In fact, all I did was borrow traits from other patterns for it. But let me tell you how this one evolved over the course of the last year. So last May on the Savage River, when the sulfurs are typically starting to hatch, there was another bug that I didn't quite recognize. It wasn't yellow like the typical sulfurs. It was a bit lighter, almost a white color. Now, it was definitely a mayfly. Now, maybe it was a PMD or just a lighter version of a sulfur. I really don't know what it was. So I get back in my bench and tie up half a dozen bugs that I think look like this thing. And I experimented with a tail. I first started with white hackle fibers. Then I went to a bucktail, even a white deer body hair. But they ended up being a little bit too stiff. So I went back to the hackle fibers. And I tried several wings too. I started with some hackle feather tips and I even used some duck slips, white duck slips. But after a few fish, those things got pretty chewed up and waterlogged. So I finally settled on white calf tail. But the one thing that I didn't really change from the first version to the one I tied today is the flashy silver tinsel that I wrap up through the body. And I have always used either a white or a light cream hackle. Sometimes I do hackle it pretty sparsely, almost like a Catskill style, but typically I tie it pretty bushy. Now, one note on the silver tinsel on the body, I really have come to believe that that's what has made this fly successful for me. I have had most of my luck with it on sunny days when we typically go to flashier flies. And as you'll see me fishing this after the tie, it was a really sunny day on the Savage this weekend, which is one of the reasons I broke this out of my experimental box. And since I have been tying and fishing this fly for over a year now, and I'm making a video on it, maybe it's time we give it a name. And since I didn't do a book review this week, let's do a Name the Fly contest. And how we play this game here is really simple. Just leave a comment with what you think we should call this fly. In a couple of days, I'll pick a winner and send you a $25 gift card to Jay Stockard. So that's it. This is a pretty fun pattern. I hope you all like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, my generic cream colored mayfly with a little bit of flash. And I tie this on a size 12, 14, and 16. This is a size 12, it's a 1X long barbless dry fly hook, and I do use black thread. I thought about using white, but really the only place you see the thread in the end is at the head, so black is just fine. Now the first thing I catch in is just a little bit of calf tail. And I do put this in my stacker, but you don't have to. In fact, sometimes I don't even use it. When I'm tying this in the size 16, I just totally leave this part out right here. So go ahead and stack it if you want or not. And, you know, catch it in about however long you do a wing, maybe a, a third of a, a body length right there. Let's go ahead and try that right there. So it's not huge. And I actually, I wondered if just leaving this out, if it's still gonna be an effective fly. But I did fish a few of these without the wing, and it definitely makes a difference. It does make it a lot more visible. So I have ended up just continuing to put this wing here. So go ahead and cut that off at a little bit of a taper if you can. Now take some loose to medium wraps going back. Watch the point of your hook. And then let's take our thread back to where we're going to catch in our tail. And for the tail, I've been using white saddle hackle feathers, about 10 or so of them, and probably a body length is about right. So just go ahead and catch that in. I did experiment with bucktail and even white deer body hair, but I ended up going back to the hackle fibers. They just work a little bit better and give it a little bit more life. And that part of the fly actually sits down in the water, so I think it's a better option. So the next thing I want to catch in is a rib and the flat mylar tinsel, gold or silver. I want the silver showing, so I'm going to catch it in with the silver side toward the hook. And the dubbing on this, I just use a synthetic. This is a super fine and a cream or a light yellow or a white is going to look good and, and stay in the, the theme of the fly. But put this on about as thin as you can get it because our underbody is already kind of thick with that calf tail there. So this is about a three inch noodle. Let's go ahead and wrap it up till we get right behind that wing. 
Now we can wrap our rib. And you know, I think four or five wraps is sufficient. You don't really want to overpower it with flash. Now before I post this wing up, I am going to catch in my hackle. It's just a standard dry fly hackle, and this one, it's a white, but you know, again, cream or a light ginger would be just fine right here. So let's catch it in with a little bit of bare stem showing. Try to leave it perpendicular right there. And I'm gonna leave my stem going forward, and I'm gonna pull up all of this calf tail and then just try to prop it up and catch this stem down at the same time. And if you can get this propped up at near 90 degrees, I think that's gonna be fine. If you don't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Just get it propped up the best you can. Now let's wrap this hackle. And I wanna do at least three wraps behind it and then three or four in front of it. Okay, when you've got enough up front, go ahead and catch it off. And we're gonna have a little bit of cleanup. I've got some fibers pointing forward right there. But before I snip that excess feather, I'm gonna pull everything back and then just try to get a flat area here where I can make room for a whip finish. Okay, let's snip this feather and then worry about our cleanup. I got a little bit of thread sticking off right there. I might have nicked it in that last step. But now's your chance to clean this up if you want to. Um, otherwise, just put a drop of head cement and you got a fishable fly. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Stick around the next couple of minutes if you want to see me fishing this thing. All right, I'm back. I got some fishy looking water right behind me. So far, first couple hours this morning, I've only gotten two. Both of those were on tan caddis, but I have seen some sulfurs in the air in the last 30 minutes or so. So I'm trying a new experimental fly. It's just a cream colored mayfly, um, but it's got a little bit of flash in the body. So it's not a, a sulfur, um, not really a light Cahill. It does have a wing and it's just got a little bit of flash wrapped up through the body. So let's see if we can fool anything with this guy. There's the guy. Let's see, what do we have on here? How big is this guy? Probably big enough for the net. Don't go downstream on me, buddy. All right. Wet my hand here. And there we go, about a nine inch little wild brown, pretty fish. Let him get back in there. Okay, here's a little stretch I wanna fish, which is one of those stretches that a lot of people would probably overlook or just bypass. It's not real deep water and it's not real fast, but there are a couple of scenes out there that I could see fish holding but I've got to keep a pretty low profile. I've got bushes on the ground behind me. I've got some trees up there. So I'm on my knees right here. I'm taking a knee and I've got to get some, you know, it'll be tough to get some casts out there, but um, you know, can do some roll casting. and I've got a little bit of room for a back cast, but we'll see. I might be able to get some casts about at least halfway across out here. There's one, there's one. All right, what kind of fish we got right here. Not real big. I think I can handle this guy without the net. Pretty little fish. 